Hello, BSN Wandi. We are the last group to present our topic for today, and we are going to report the Lumad of Mindanao on Philippine history and culture. We hope that you will learn something. The indigenous cultural communities' heritage are believed to make up to 10 percent of the national population. They have been pushed to the mountains and forest by the lowlanders ever since towns and cities were built. In 1886, 15 of the more than 18 ICC in Mindanao adopted the term Lumad, a Visayan word for native or indigenous, to distinguish themselves from the Christians and Muslims in Mindanao. Republic Act 6734, enacted during Perzana King's time, used the term to differentiate these ethnic communities from the Bangsamoro people. Most of the ICC in Mindanao speak languages belonging to the Manobo family of languages in Zabdilaan, Tiboli, and Tiburi. First is we have South Central Mindanao, specifically Davao, Bukidnon, and Cotabato. There we have Bagobo, Pagacaulo, Peduray, Manobo, Kulaman, Bilaan, and Tiboli. Next is we have Eastern Mindanao, specifically Agusan, Mokidnon, Davao, and Surigao. There, we have Mandaya, Eita, Mansaka, and Dibabao. For our third region, we have North Central Mindanao, specifically Mokidnon, and there, they have been called Mokidnon or Higaunon. And lastly, we have Western Mindanao, and the Sulu Islands, specifically Zamboanga, Cotabato, and Lanao. There, we have Maguindanao, Eranon, Maranao, Tausog, Samal, Yakan, Kalibugan, and Subanay. The Lumad who live within the southern highland ranges are Sweden farmers and practice little trade. While the Bagobos' elaborate dress and personal adornment are well known among anthropologists. The Tibuli and Tedurai are also known for their baskets, trinkets, bracelets, and earrings made of brass. The Tibuli's tinala are prized fabrics believed to be inspired by the dreams of the woman weavers. The monetization of the indigenous communities of Mindanao and the Sulu Archipelago outlines what the Lumads desire according to the book The Lumad Wants, and these are some of these. The return of all lands taken from the through deceit, harassment, illegal manipulation, or simply growth, the migration of settlers into ancestral domain controlled, their culture to be learned, respected, and taught as part of the depth ed curriculum. Most of the ICC do not possess money or private property and widely discriminated against find it hard to integrate with the mainstream society. With the destruction of the forests as well as with efforts of the lowland majority to assimilate them into Christian culture, the ICC struggle to protect their ancestral domain and cultural identity. Lumad are non-Muslim or non-Christian, although from Hokano in 1998, the orientation of their cultural developments appears to be toward the Muslim groups. The anthropologist Felipe Landa Hokano stresses that in most cases, language is the only differentiating element in ethnic cultures, particularly among those which occupy adjacent and contiguous territory. Like many of its neighbors, Bogobo society is ruled by a class of Warriors known as Magani or Bagani. The Mandaya, Agusan Manobo, and Atta share numerous 
cultural traits and social institutions such as in clothing and religious rituals. They practice slash and burn farming and trade with neighbors. Warriors headed by the Datu are greatly valued and respected. And now we're down to the history of Lumags. About the 11th century, called the Emergent Period, there were groups in Mindanao such as Caragan, Mandanaos, Lutaos, Subanos, and the Pitans. Apparently, the Caragans were found in Misamis Oriental, Agusan, and the Pitnon area. Lumads in Mindanao resisted against American colonization. In 1906, Governor Botan of Davao was murdered in the Bogobos in the area. The coming of the Japanese in Davao was resisted by the Bogobos between 1918 to 1935 as the latter threatened to displace them from their homelands. Thus, concern from the Lumads in Mindanao during the contemporary times focused on the development projects that threatened to displace the Lumads from their homelands. An example of this is the hydroelectric project which is located in Mount Up. Senate Bill 1728, sponsored by Juan Flavio entitled the April of 1997, seeks to recognize, protect, and promote the rights of the indigenous cultural communities and to appropriate funds for the purpose. Economically, Lumens practiced Sweden agriculture depending on the land's productivity. Sweden cultivation is a way of farming that involves clearing of natural air, largely natural vegetation, usually using fire, to plant crops for one or two years and then allowing plants to regenerate on the plot for two years or more before clearing and cropping it again. Communal sharing of resources based on the belief of sacredness of land and nature as divine endowments define the relationship with their environment. Their socio-political arrangements were varied or different, such as environmental justice, territory, degradation of environment, neoliberal economics, and others. The Mandaya were led by the Bagani or Magani or Warrior, while the Bogobos, Manuvu, as well as most of the Lumads are by their Datu. The Datu subjects were his Sakops, or what we call the warriors. The Lumad remained isolated and withdrawn from the hills and forests that were difficult to penetrate or find because they wanted the preservation of the land, which makes them continuously vulnerable to aggression against development and land grabbing. The Spanish colonial strategy was to begin colonization along the coast towards the plains for purposes of trade and political consolidation. During the revolution of 1896, Lumans joined a band of deportados and voluntarios who started a mutiny in Marawi city against their Spanish superiors. They roamed the Misamis Oriental area, located in northern Mindanao, Region 10, harassing and wrecking on Chinese and Spanish-owned business and establishments. They were fully armed and looked healthy. They were led by an armed Lumad named Suba, who had his own trumpeteers announce their coming. They were later known to have joined a group of rebels in the Agusan area who left to join the Katipuneros of Luzon. When American rule was consolidated, a systematic policy to integrate Mindanao and Sulu began. Lumads and the Muslims were grouped in under a tribal system. In Davao, there were six tribes, which were Ata, Guyanga, Mandaya, Manobos, and Tagakaulo. There were 18 tribes in Cotabato, 13 in Lanao, 9 in Sulu, 5 in Zamboanga, and 56 in Subdistrict. The district governor who heeded the wards had a deputy in the person of the Lumad Datu. Moreover, American rule and later during the Commonwealth, the Lumad landscape changed. For instance, in the plains of Tupi and Palomolok and South Cotabato, Blaan Lumads gave way to the Dole pineapple plantations. Higaonons and Talaandigs who thrived by the plains of Bukidnon were neighbors to the Delmonte plantations. By the 1960s, bulldozers, 
cranes, and giant trucks were ubiquitous in the area of Banmuons. Foreign agribusiness covered 1,000 to 3,000 hectares of Lumad lands in Bukidnon, Davao area. So, that's the end of our report. Thank you so much for sparing your time and for listening.